Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor content about once a week. Uh, so in this video, I'll show you how to use my newest reactor ensemble, which is called Circle Scratch. And I just give you a sample of what it can do, but basically it's a looper. You can record up to four bars of audio data, and then you can scratch it back in real time. And it can be any audio data. It can come from um, any audio source that you can plug into Reactor. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to use some uh, pre-made loops, but you could even you could do things way more exciting, like recording live instruments and then scratching those on the fly. Um, so note that the uh, BPM of my reactor project and the samples I'm using are the same. So you want to make sure that you do that. Uh, if you're recording loops coming from a DAW, then the reactor BPM should be set autom automatically for you. So I've got the loop playing now, and as soon as I press record here, um, we're going to see it start recording. And if you look at the um, big visual we have that's taking up most of the screen here, um, the recording is going to be done at the spot where the orange line is intersecting the circle, and that's going to be our playback position as well for when we start scratching. Alright, well I'm going to turn the play button off so I can speak while I'm showing you how all of this works. So once we have a sound playing, we can scratch it by just left clicking on the GUI and dragging the mouse. Um, it works as circular motion, so you can just drag it in a circle basically to spin the sample around. And there are two basic modes of playback um, that are controlled by the snap button at the bottom. So when the snap button is off, uh, wherever you leave the sample when you let up the left mouse button is uh, where the sample will start playing. When the snap button is on, the sample position continues to increase while you're scratching, and when you stop scratching, it jumps back to the position it would have been at had you never been scratching in the first place. So this is a useful a uh, tool for like scratching in time. You can add like a quick scratch at the end of a bar and when you let up it'll automatically snap back to um, the beginning of the next bar, for example. And I'll try to demonstrate that. And My skills with this sort of thing are obviously not very good, but... Alright, so another control we have is the follow knob, and this controls how fast the sample movement follows your mouse movement when you're scratching. So the higher the follow knob's value, the faster um, the sample will track the movement of your mouse, uh, which I don't like very much. I like to keep the follow knob at a very low value, and that way um, you kind of get a more realistic scratching sound. And finally we have the bars knob, and this obviously just controls the number of bars that get recorded. Um, and you don't really want to change this after a sound gets recorded, as I'll show you. So yeah, increasing the number of bars there had a pretty strange effect on the playback. 
All right, so there's one last thing I wanted to show you, and this is not really supported behavior, and it'll probably change before I release the next version of Circle Scratch, which should be soon, because there's a lot of uh, various bells and whistles I want to add to this. Um, so um, this is a method to create some very kind of crazy glitched out sounds, and um, definitely thinking about some ways to improve a lot of the behavior because you can end up with a lot of high-pitched squeals. But nonetheless, uh, I thought I'd show this to you anyway, because I think it's pretty fun to fool around with. So here's a way to make some pretty glitched out sounds with uh, Circle Scratch. And again, this is not really supported behavior, so don't complain to me if you don't like the way it sounds. It's not really the uh, focus of the ensemble. So I'm just going to start out here with a very simple beat. And I'm going to record another loop on top of it. And as I do, I'm going to scratch, which is going to change the inc uh, the right position um, that we're recording the audio data to. So we're going to get some weird effects out of it. And if you repeat this process a number of times, you can just end up with these uh, loops that are just utterly crushed bits and pieces of other loops. And I, I find it to be pretty fun. If you don't like glitch music, I can understand why you might hate it. All right, so that's some um, kind of weird glitchy behavior that you can get out of Circle Scratch. Um, so I'm pretty into this ensemble. Uh, I really like the design of it a lot, and um, it's I feel like it's a uh, pretty creative. I have never seen anything quite like it before, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of potential that's not quite being reached uh, in this current version. One thing I really want to add is the ability to automatically start recording whenever you receive a MIDI start clock, for example. Um, I have a few other ideas as well. But I'd also be interested in um, seeing if the larger reactor community had any ideas about ways to improve this. So if you have any suggestions, please just leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to implement them if I think they're worthy of it. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys like this video. Um, you can download Circle Scratch from the Reactor User Library, and I'll leave a link in the video description. And hopefully I'll see you next week with a new Reactor tutorial.